feeling uh pretty damn fantastic on this Sunday. Lions are back. You know what I'm saying? The Tribal Chief is back. You know what I'm saying? And now Ishan is fighting through a flu game. He's like Michael Jordan right now. Didn't we just have a flu game? I know I had my flu game like a month ago with sinuses and allergies. I think this man actually has the legit flu over here. So hopefully, like, it don't come through the microphones and to our ear holes and we catch it. This is the week of, or about to be the week of Christmas. So we got to make sure that we are happy and healthy up in here. But I am on cloud nine. Thank you, Lions. We back. Finally, if my media board was working, gunshots claps but it ain't working so we just probably need to move on at this point uh Ishan I want you to uh tell the fans in your silky smooth very white impersonation how are you sir you know I was all right until I started watching uh ESPN and I saw them the pistons in their rankings and you know, I didn't, I didn't text you guys because I was like, no, I'm already sick, and I didn't want to get sicker. But I think I'm done with the NBA. Where are we at? 23 in a row now? 22 in a row? Yeah. Somewhere like that. Yeah. With no end in sight. Yeah. Mm. Draymond out indefinitely for the rest of the season. Another, uh, you know, Michiganer. Mm. I'm done. I'm done. We're gonna start again in the NBA next year. <sighs> And we got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. Uh, before I intro the pod, Rhodesia, Monday Night Raw had your two favorite wrestlers on Raw, CM Punk and Seth Rollins in the ring. Friday Night on SmackDown had your Dylon, 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 Dylon favorite wrestler mm-hmm. in the ring, Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. Where are you at right now in terms of being high on Cloud Nine with your favorite wrestlers being back on? WWE TV. I got a new favorite, Dylan, 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 Dylan. And this person was super duper ice cold, super frigid temperatures. Man, if I had, man, I would be hitting that button right now. What in the I F U C K button right now? Welcome back, AJ Styles. Immediately made me interested in him. Yes. And y'all know <laughs> I've been super out on AJ. I think. Uh, Ishan has been out on AJ since like 2020. Mm-hmm. I have been like, I don't care. Y'all was clamoring for him for the match with Roman and Saudi. And I'm like, I don't want to see that, man. Like, nobody cares about AJ Styles. It was like every single week on social media. Oh, AJ's supposed to be back this Friday on SmackDown. I don't care <laughs> about AJ Styles. AJ Styles hooked. shows up, hits LA Knight with a clothesline, dressed in all black. I was like, man, I care about AJ Styles. I'm here for AJ Styles now. This dude put I'll on like damn. 20 pounds of muscle. Yeah. This is the best I've ever seen AJ look. Him, Orton, and MJF on the same HGH plan. <laughs> Shout out to them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They figured out a way behind the wellness program. I like it. I like it. Like, like Booker <laughs> T would say. But yeah, well, yeah, I was, uh, I was, man, SmackDown went off. I was like, all right, y'all got me. Let's see what <laughs> next week yep. looks like. But. I was so down on AJ until that. So I'm glad at least we get some type of different direction from him. Um, but let's, let's intro the pod and let's kind of talk about SmackDown. Because there's a couple things on there that I want to get your guys' thoughts about. We are on episode 92. 100 is coming closer and closer and closer. And we have our uh, year best of the year specials plan. We got our TFW best of series coming next week. I am super excited about that. It will be over two episodes. It is That is way too much to do in one episode. So we will drop that on uh, actually Christmas week. So next week we'll have part one on Sunday and then we'll have part two on Wednesday to you guys. So hopefully through your travels, all safe travels, if you guys are going to meet family or friends through car, train, plane, we are going to lock you in to some awesome year in discussions and awards but right now we're on episode 92 tfw podcast you guys know three the hard way matt rhodesia ishan let's uh i guess let's start with roman right because this is the first show he's been there since he beat la night and we went through that whole thing in saudi and what i can say is like immediately for the first time in a really really long time it felt like roman 
his presence wasn't needed. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing. It's a good thing because they have a lot of star power now on SmackDown that it felt like just the icing on the cake and it wasn't like a main ingredient to eat, to make the cake taste good for that particular week. What'd you guys think of him starting to show off and then his promo? I absolutely loved my second favorite wrestler now. Just the energy, once that music hits and he comes out, I was interested to see him and Randy already kind of, first off, they did come to blows, but for them to get in the mic and talk to each other, um, I was wondering how he's going to go back and forth on that. I thought they actually did a really good job on their back and forth. Um, talking about some, I ain't the same Roman back in 2000 and blank. I'm different. And then he's like, yeah, I see it. I see that you're different. I mean, just the whole, that whole interaction, I didn't think I was going to get the payoff quite, quite yet, but I know we had to get that to be able to get solo and Jimmy against Randy in some form or fashion, but overall super excited to see him. Like you said, it's, he still has the aura. He's still him. There's no doubt about it, but it was almost like, okay, Roman came back. Yeah, it was it, good. Yep. I really enjoyed it. You know, I forgot what the um, undisputed title looked like for a moment. That's looking dope. <laughs> He's silly. No, I ain't seen it in so damn long. <laughs> but you forgot you to know, turn I'm, yellow. I'm, yeah, that's going to turn yellow, man. Whatever, it looked yellow to me. <laughs> it looked yellow. But um, yeah, it was a good segment. Um, as you said, I love the back and forth between Randy and, and Roman. I'm ready for him to lose that title, y'all. <laughs> well, y'all. well, we know it ain't happening to to Randy, but I think probably what I was most excited about by the end of SmackDown was my assumption was we would just get Randy against Orton. Randy gets Orton. Randy gets Roman <laughs> at Rumble. And I was good with that. I was good with that just because I'm like, this is a great spot for Randy to be in. We haven't seen this version of Randy against this version of Roman at a high mm-hmm. profile pay per view. That's a big match, even though we know Roman's not going to lose. That's still a pretty marquee match for the Rumble. And then I thought that was going to lead to Solo versus Randy at Mania, which still may happen. But now. There's a lot of L.A. Knight integration still with the bloodline in in Orton. Now you throw in AJ. So I'm even more excited of now the thought of, do we get a fatal Mm four-way between Roman, Randy, L.A. Knight, and AJ Styles at the Rumble? And the reason why I personally would be so excited about that is because then we can branch off a lot of stories heading into Mania. Right? So then do we go AJ versus L.A. Knight at Mania? Do you go Randy Orton versus LA Knight? Do you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of different ways they can go with it. And I, I'm excited about that. So, if it was up to you guys, and we are, of course, we haven't seen, they tape SmackDown because they're off uh, after, I think, Raw this week. They're done until the day after Christmas. So, typically with tape shows, well, back in the day anyway, not much happened. That's kind of changed now. We've seen that with NXT, and we'll, of course, talk about Ilya dragging off. And that whole thing that was online. But so we don't know anything outside of what we've seen on TV. I, I stay away from spoilers as much as I can. What do you guys want to see at the Rumble? Would you rather see a one on one match with Roman and Randy, or are you down for some type of triple threat or, or fatal four way? For your Rumbles, your Money in the Banks, your War Games, those types of PLEs, it's almost like you only want to watch the gimmick of that PLA. Like anybody else, okay, whatever. But now when you say like that fatal four way, holy hell, to have like such a great championship match that's not just like a throwaway match at a rumble, man, like that that is piquing my interest. And then I, when you were talking about that, I'm like, what an embarrassment of riches that you're talking about a fatal four way that solid, that high profile, and you still got a rumble going on. Two rumbles, the male and the female. If I had to say, I mean, I like how you put it together, that fatal four way, give me that. Cause Randy and Roman, wonderful. But that AJ came out. I'm, it is something. It is just something. When AJ came out, I, there's just no denying it. This is probably what I felt about AJ when he first debuted in WWE. Wow. Yep. Just from just from what ten seconds, and then when he gave it to um, LA Knight, I was like, that's Yo. probably what it is because you hate LA Knight. Ah, I don't hate LA Knight. He's my third figured favorite wrestler. No, yep, he's figured you out. Wrestler. That's why you were so excited. He was like, hell yeah. Get get Los Angeles. He deserves that. That's you know that's maybe nuts. subconsciously, but not consciously. I'm sure I don't that's what that is. way. So give me the fatal four way, just because you brought that up and like I got tingly all inside. So yeah, okay, let's, let's do that. 
Uh, I'm not so in the four, fatal four way just yet. So uh, you want those them in the enrollment? Yeah, I mean they they can continue the story to where they can integrate, you know, AJ and Knight. And you know, like so far, Knight doesn't have a a problem with Randy, right? And I don't see why he needs a, another championship match. Or AJ's been gone for so long. Why does he get one? I mean, I'm sure they can create like some kind of situation where that might be you know, make a lot of sense. I would like to maybe see a grudge match, LA Knight and AJ. Because you know, I'm sure that AJ will bring out the best LA Knight, maybe step, take him to the next level. Um, At the Rumble? Yeah. yeah. So a solos match, okay. Or well, singles I mean, match, as I should call well, it. Well, LA Knight deserves a rematch because he lost due to bloodline interference. So well, that, that, that would be deserve, hit. deserves a rematch then. And there right? you go. We can, we, we can just go down the line. Well, Cody, Cody's Cody getting his rematch because one. of it. He ain't got no goddamn rematch because who of else? that. Who else, who else deserves a rematch? Jimmy uh, deserves Drew? a rematch. Or Jay, I mean. Drew? Right? Drew, Jay? Drew deserves a rematch. Jay Isha? deserves a rematch. Uh, bring Riddle back. Riddle deserves a rematch. Because that was oh, line interference. Uh, who else deserves Brock? a rematch against Roman? Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Brock, because the they put the entire out. yeah, they put everything on top of him. Hey, throw CM Punk in there too, right? Hell yeah, throw Punk in there. <laughs> like he was the one that started the shield. He deserves a rematch. Sami Zayn deserves a rematch just because it was too much pressure on that match happening in Canada. So he's like, let me do it on US soil. Sammy deserves a rematch. Who you know who really deserves it? Who else? After the Draymond hit, KO needs a rematch. KO needs a rematch just because we knew Rumble was just a backdrop to get to Sammy leaving the bloodline. Absolutely. Draymond Green needs a rematch because he's been doing this to the NBA just to get to the Tribal Chief at like WrestleMania 55. So Draymond deserves a rematch. Uh, who else deserves? Oh, and last but not least, Stone Cold Steve Austin needs a rematch because that was supposed to be the match last year. But Austin knew he was just going to do the job, so he didn't want to do it. So they really haven't wrestled yet, you guys but give him the rematch, too. And throw the, throw the Rock in there, yeah, special guest referee. On this, on this video. He just and like, Miz suck. deserves a rematch. You know what I'm saying? Because Miz is just always there whenever you need him. He's, always. He's always there. He deserves yeah. that rematch, too. So Hell you went yeah. out. The last person that you were on was Javon yeah. Green. Hell yeah. No, I'm there. You'll hear it on the playback. <laughs> don't, don't you worry. You'll see all the people... <laughs> That deserves a rematch. You I just, I just gunshots said, too. I just booked Roman's next twelve feuds in the last forty-five I seconds. I think you. I think you booked the Royal Rumble. I think instead <laughs> of uh, actual thirty-man match, we have a thirty-man rematch. This is what I wanted them to do with MJF at World's End. All yeah, these well, he's, issues. He's, he's damn near See? getting there. Autumn Devils. Autumn Devils. Autumn Devils. <laughs> um, it, it did. It did feel like too uh, outside of like the Roman AJ of it all it did feel like watching those tournament matches on smackdown that those talents this was like their answer to the continental classic those matches were really really good mm -hmm. like ko and theory went out and killed carmelo and grayson and i thought mm -hmm. they did a fantastic job of setting both of them up to succeed they have fantastic chemistry we knew that and saw that in nxt so i thought that was like best case scenario hey if we're going to make Carmelo a big deal, which they did with that promo video package and then have that match, who can we put him in here against that's going to make him look great? And then he can also make that person look great. I thought they did an awesome job of making each other look fantastic. But watching those matches, I'm like, man, they're going for it in these matches. And I just wonder if anything is like, well, hey, AEW, if you want to do a tournament and put on great matches, we can do that too. And let's, let's kind of see it. I, I thought that was, uh, a really good thing on, on SmackDown. The Mellow match, I want to touch on that just for a hot second. With the video package that we got, I was like, you know, this is about to be one of those great showings. Mellow comes out, looks like he belong, and he, it looked to me, he felt it, and he's always been him. He calls himself, he's him. But I knew he was going to lose. So once again, and this has been, like I said, a few months ago, I usually don't get surprised by WWE. It was another mm -hmm. moment of where I was like, wow. Carmelo won the match. Like, I, again, I didn't even, that was a surprise to me. I never would have thought he would have, especially after the great video package that he had. And Carmelo looked like he belonged. Keep him up there. Don't, don't send him back to NXT, please. They got to finish that story first. Yeah, buddy. I'm so tired of stories. He, he, he can, uh... <laughs> so tired of stories. <laughs> oh. He'll probably do double duty for a little while, though. Yeah. He'll definitely do double duty for a little while. I think, um... 
he does have to finish the story with Trick. And maybe January 7th, which is a Sunday. It'd be technically, officially our first part of the new year. Maybe that's when we can have the conversation on um, Carmella. Maybe that should be the whole episode, because we've been waiting for months to hear this from you. Okay. All yeah, right. So, yeah, well, let's do it January 7th. Okay. Let's see where he is with this U.S. tournament. See where Trick is. Because nothing's changed from my thought. I should have recorded it and just, I could just press play. And I'll be like, hey, I said this six months ago. This is what it was. Uh, Karrion Cross. I don't care about the haters. I know this is probably Karrion's, like, 13th reboot in the last year. I don't care. I, <laughs> as much as I can get Scarlet on my TV screen, I want Scarlet. I'm a big Karrion Cross guy. I get it. If you're probably not, I understand. I am. Looks like we're getting another reboot. And Rhodesia, I know you didn't catch it because you wouldn't know how he looks like that. He, you watch the promo mm-hmm. package, right? Right. Okay. Karrion, Karrion basically talks about this all is working out the plan. And he shows the video of when he made his return and uh, hit Drew and staring down Roman. And during the video, there's a moment where there's a shadow of a bald headed guy. That is Paul Errol Ellering. If you guys don't know who Paul Ellering is, he was the manager of AOP in NXT. AOP has been under contract for months in WWE. I heard that. Spoiler. Yep. And they just haven't used him. You should have gave the alert. Just like Nia's been was under contract for months and they didn't use her. So if we can get Karrion Cross aligned with Paul Ellering and AOP, man. Period. Yeah. Again, <laughs> sign me to F up. And to the 14th reboot of him. But I, I'm yeah, a Karrion yeah. Cross. And then he deserves here. his rematch. A rematch. On the range. You know what I'm saying? In this, in this version of Karrion Cross, now we booked it to. Hell yeah. See, this this we should just book the damn territory of who deserves a rematch against Roman Reigns. That's a hell of a segment. Out there, y'all listening. You tell us who deserves a rematch against Roman Reigns. And it don't matter if they never wrestled before. We still name it as a rematch. Who deserves a rematch <laughs> against Roman Reigns? I'm here for it. They um, have to be active you, wrestlers? Hell no. Oh. Not at all. <laughs> hey, before, before we go <laughs> okay? further, I will, I, will, deserves. I, I will have to say that I was, you know, getting my lawyer on the phone. I, I didn't know I need to... You know, sue Randy Orton for uh, you no know, gimmick infringement. Twice. He, say, he dropped it twice. What? Daddy's home. He didn't say he didn't put the big on there. So, like, I had I let it go because I like Randy. I want him to do well. But I, my, my, my finger's on the trigger. My man said, I want him to do well. <laughs> What's your guys' <laughs> thoughts about Karrion Cross? And looks like he's getting a. I, I mean, maybe it's not even a reboot. He's just revisiting, hey, everything's coming to plan. I thought that promo would have, like, Landed so strong if he just didn't lose to Bobby in a match that really wasn't competitive last week on SmackDown. Like, did we not know this promo was coming? Because then you should have protected Cross against a match with Bobby. But whatever, 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 right? Because whatever. But what's your guys' thoughts on that video? I have no thoughts on the video outside of more of a a vanity thing with me with Karrion. You know, I love a bald headed man. And he was my favorite. I had, when he no, bald-headed. Idea. Man. <laughs> I had no Ooh, idea. Man. They can get it. But look, so <laughs> bald headed Karrion Cross was my favorite. So version one and two, kind of, it, no, kind of two was my favorite. He was growing out his hair, and I'm like, man, just cut your hair back off. But now, with his hair longer, he looks like a like a wrestler to me. He can pull it up in that little bun or in that ponytail, and I love the look on him. Now, still bald is my favorite, but I'm really behind this new hair length on carrying it looks good on him and i think he probably had that kind of length maybe years ago i I didn't watch him prior to wwe but it looks good on him you know i I like cross as well of course i I love scarlet um i don't know what the missing piece is with him maybe it's it's, it's the ring piece maybe it's a, a finisher or something i'm not sure what it is um aop i mean i i liked aop as well they'd never I never felt like AOP really hit the way it was supposed to hit. I don't feel like they ever yeah. hit even in NXT. They didn't. Uh, Did they ever come uh, up to that main event? I mean, to the main roster? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they, okay. they came I up. Um, and as soon as they came up, they lost Ellering. Um, yeah, remember they took oh, away my piece. And at that point, okay. they're not talk- talkers. Remember yeah, the promo? What you going to learn us? You don't know about that, Rhodesia. 
<laughs> what you gonna learn us? <laughs> Y'all go back and but look at that. You know what though? <laughs> like even maybe because I was young and when I saw like the Road Warriors Ellen Ring, um, he just he he didn't you know he wasn't like the ma- a major piece out of that trio to me. Ella Ring was all right, but I feel like Hawk and Animal were so charismatic on their own, especially Hawk, so over the top. Uh, I felt like you know Ella Ring was a nice piece next to them, but I didn't think he he's what brought them together. I didn't think Ellen Ring really brought that much to the trio, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, he was the only person that could speak out of three of them. Um, I just don't really see what you know he's going to add to like that faction whenever they come up. What I hope is that the four of them don't just be like us, a jobber faction. That Smackdown. can't be the case, man, because we know H is super high on Cross. On cross yep. And we know he's super high on AOP and Ellering. Hell, he had him in a really nice spot. In NXT, so so high he got a uh, he got what was it? Uh, I lose my mind. He he got a job match last week. Who Bobby beat Carrying Cross? Be- well, because he knew he was setting him up for the rematch against Roman, so nobody's gonna remember the match against Bobby I on a random that. SmackDown. That's why. What else y'all got from SmackDown before we move on to? We got a lot of news to kind of just hit in kind of quick succession because uh, we try to stay you know right around the hour on uh, the Sunday pods, but we got to talk about injuries. We got to talk about, there's a lot to kind of talk about. So what else y'all got from SmackDown before we move on? Just the one last thing for me on SmackDown was Bailey. Great video package. It looked like they were a united front. They were behind her in the video package and in the match mm. too. She mm. got the, she got, she helped them win again. The Kabuki Warriors win with the assist from Dakota, but they dropped that line that Dakota's the mastermind. So I'm quite sure that's going to, that was done by design and said by design, but I was surprised to see that they were all like united with Bailey. Well, we knew, we know Dakota's going to be the one that's going to pull the trigger on Bailey whenever that happens. But when I saw that video package, I was like, "Man, are they setting up Bailey to win the Rumble?" So <laughs> it's a possibility. It's a it's a strong possibility. It's a strong possibility, especially with Charlotte being out. So not because you gotta you gotta flip plans. I don't know if Charlotte's plan was. Bianca, I don't know if Charlotte's plans was something with the four horse woman, you know what I mean? That whole thing we talked about a few weeks ago, but now whatever it is, because she's out for nine months, so well mm. wishes to her. Um, looks like it's more than the ACL. They it was it's pretty bad, pretty bad of an injury, which they knew when it happened for the most part. But you watch the video package, and it's like you could see a world where EO versus Bailey for that title, if booked properly, is a super hot. Mania match. I don't think I would do that. Um, just because I think there's better ways to get to there if we had to get there, you know, through breaking up. And I don't think she has to win the Rumble for that, but it's a possibility. Yeah. I mean, I thought we were going to go with the uh, Horsewomen versus Damage Control and then maybe Bianca winning the Rumble and challenge Rhea. We could finally get that, that rematch. I don't know if they ever wrestled. I don't remember now. Um, I'm not sure if I, I feel. I feel like they can. If they're gonna do the four way match. I mean, the four woman match. I feel like they can put Bianca in there, but I don't know who who you have ready for Rhea for Mania. So I don't know. What do you think? Well, I thought they should have done Rhea versus Becky. That's that's their sitting waiting on a silver platter for them. Because they had that stare down months and months ago, and nothing came out of it. Of course, they can hold on to it. They don't have to do that this year, but that is a ready-made match. And who else to take the title from Rhea? Because I think it's probably about time for Rhea to drop the title at Mania. It's been a year. She she hasn't done much with the women's division. She's done a ton with the men's division. And Mm -hmm. her character, she's a bigger star right now than she's ever been. Uh, but it's not like this title reign has just been fantastic. I think she's only had like four defenses, three or four defenses, so it hasn't been much at all. Kind of like Roman's reign this, this year, to be honest. She's but just I there, think, though. Yeah, so, but you, I think that it's time to, you can pull it off of her, and then if you think about like that next, that Raw after Mania, and then that SmackDown after Mania, you could, theoretically, you could have Becky as champ, Jade Cargill as champ, CM Punk as champ, Cody Rhodes is champ. Mm. 
Like that is like, yo, craziness. So that's why that's why we watch, right? That's why you got that watch. right. You got that right. Uh, where y'all want to go? Y'all want to go? Y'all want to talk about Liv Morgan doing her best Prince Nana impersonation and getting arrested while swerving while she's driving? Y'all want to go there? Do y'all want to go I, with? I don't know anything about what you just said, but that was funny. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, do y'all want to go injuries and talk about Kenny being out with die? Was it die? Diverticulitis. Diverticulitis. The mm-hmm. same thing that Brock Lesnar had that put him on the shelf. Y'all want to talk about TV deals? Where y'all, where y'all want to start? Let's go in order of what you just said there. Let's talk about Liv. You intrigued me there. So what happened? Okay. So Liv Morgan got busted for having weed on her in Florida. I guess Florida's weed is still illegal. That's nuts that people are, are still getting arrested for weed in 2023 where it's like legal in the majority of the country but whatever uh she was swerving while she was driving she was doing her prince 99 impersonation you know what i'm saying <laughs> killing it and it was like okay this person cannot be swerving while they're driving pulled her over i guess she had like a vape pen and some type of synthetic something in the car got booked she's out already no heat on her from wwe which why would it be maybe the heat is just like you shouldn't be swerving you know what I'm saying? Like, leave that to swerve in AEW. Like, Our Prince you Nana. can't be doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, yeah, that, that's what it is. Case open, case closed. Hopefully for her, you know, she'll pay a fine and, and that's it. But, uh, yeah, that was on Thursday, I think it was. So that makes sense why on the Twitter, because I really wasn't on social media this week, but I would see Liv Morgan and people talking about how she was high and stuff like that. But it was making fun of it and, like, lighthearted about it. So I was like, it must have been something that happened. Anybody tripping wow. on that? Yeah, I mean, when you first said, I'm thinking she had like pounds of weed and she's in Miami about to move some weight. I'm like, what's happening here? He's about a vape pen? She could. Stop. You know, and it's like if she was doing that, it's probably because she needs the money, right? Then it's like, you know what? H, give her the rematch against Roman Reigns. Give her that hot payday. So she ain't got to worry about out here moving Ooh. weight like she's Pablo Ooh. Escobar. You know what I mean? Where the gunshots at? Boom. Maybe next week. <laughs> that thing just spinning right now. I hate this meteor board. Eshan, you you've uh, partaken in CBD before, right? You said it mellows you out, it chills you out, all that kind of good stuff. If a police officer stopped you for having CBD, right, not even THC, stopped you for having THC, what would you say to that police officer? I mean, it's a different conversation because in Georgia, CBD is legal. So, in Florida, hey, see, you know, in Florida, smoke ain't, ain't legal yet. So, y'all got to get the right people in positions that can make these decisions. I think they've tried to um, legalize it a couple of times um, and it's been denied each time. I think, um, I think it's up for another vote sometime next year. So hopefully people of Florida, you know, come and stop. So that way people like live working can enjoy their downtime, right? She out here, you know, she's injured. She's trying to feel good. She's hanging out with Lana for the past couple of weeks. They doing their thing and here they come disrupting her. I think you need to be careful with that synthetic stuff, though. Yeah, you Keep never know. That could be why she was swerving. Yeah, yeah that probably yeah, was sure. the reason why. It could be why she was swerving. Yeah. So she did that. Um, word comes out, I guess, midweek, probably. And we touched on it a couple weeks ago. This is when I went on my whole, are we getting Mercedes back or Sasha Banks back? But it looks like it's pretty much official. There is no plans. There is no working plans at all to have Mercedes, Sasha Banks coming in to AEW. So we saw her at All In, in the crowd. At that time, it was just like, yep, it's basically going to be a formality when she gets uh, healthy, she's coming in to AEW. Something changed. I do know her accent price is really, really high. I do know that's why she's not in WWE right now is because I think her and Triple H had conversations when Triple H took over the book, and she gave them her price. And remember, the reports were... Some of our top guys don't make that. I still think she's worth it because I can tell you just by our views alone on YouTube, when we do shorts and we talk about Sasha Banks, those numbers are pretty high. So there is a evidently a vast majority of Mercedes Sasha Banks fans that will follow her wherever she goes. And it's probably even a lot of Sasha Banks fans that, are not watching WWE right now because she's not there. I think she brings that type of attention to wherever she goes. But it looks like they're out on AEW. I don't know if it's just financial or if it's a creative thing too, where it just ain't the right time, right place right now for Mercedes to show up in AEW. 
or maybe she already has some type of secret kind of deal with Triple H to come back. You got to bring her back at the Rumble, right? Like if that music hits and Michael Cole says it's boss time, that's when it's like, oh, that's goosebumps right there. Because we got to have that moment. Now, do you have that moment along with Jade or what? I don't know, but we got to have that holy shit moment, I think, at this Rumble. And it could be Sasha Banks, but as of right now, AEW ain't in it. I don't think she's going back to Japan because her new Japan deal is up. So one plus one equals two. There's only one other major game in town that's going to afford her, and that's WWE. So once again, we've talked about this before, but now knowing that, it looks like this is, this is factual, actual information. What's your guys' thoughts about it looks like there's only one game in town for Sasha, and that's WWE. For the record, I have always said that she was going to be number 30 in the Royal Rumble. I guess I had my years off. It was, yeah, I, said said it last, I said it for 2023, it um, but it's 2024. So Sasha Banks will be number 30 in the Royal Rumble. Spoiler alert. But just a couple of thoughts on what you said there. Um, make your money. Get, know what you're worth. Go out there and get it. But at the same time, I can understand. And I was trying to pull up the actual list here myself so I didn't talk out the side of my ass. But if she's asking for this outrageous amount of money, to my memory, Sasha gets injured a lot. She's taking a lot of time off from wrestling. Do you want to give somebody that much money who seems to? And again, this is just off my memory. I was trying to pull up the full list of all her injuries. But there's someone who gets hurt all the time. Do you want to pay yeah, her Yeah, she doesn't much? get hurt all the time. Not close. Not even close. I just always feel like every year there's some kind of injury. She's gone for some time. Yep, she's not injured a ton. Not out of the ordinary. She's not okay. injury prone or anything like that. In my mind, it feels like that. Maybe it's because she wrestles really hard, and I, I have a gripe with how hard she wrestles with like her, her thinner her stature, stature. But get your money. If you can get it, go ahead and get it and, and hold out. And it shouldn't matter if the top guys are getting X amount of dollars. You're going to be bringing that attention to WWE and back to it. Like you said, when we talk about Sasha Banks, those numbers sky, skyrocket. Get your money, girl. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to talk about her contract. I hope that she does come back for WWE. Um, she says she's going to be ready to go in January. There is a hot PLE happening in January. So, and as far as, uh, you know, the conversations with AEW stopping, I mean, good. Because I, I never want her to go to AEW. Ever, to be honest with you. I mean, that's no shot against AEW. I just, know, I just don't feel like they have enough spotlight or attention on their, on their women's division to really be able to properly utilize her. Um, Looking at that roster right now in AEW for the women, they got a lot of up-and-comers, um, but I just don't feel like it's befitting of a Sasha Banks or a Mercedes Monet right now. If she can go back to WWE, I mean, it's a smorgasbord of talent for her to kind of interact with, and I would love to see her in the ring with. So if, she, if the game plans to get her back at the Rumble, I'm all for it. I'd like to see her winning, too. I would like to see that 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 four way match. Uh, I mean that four women's match. But I like yeah, to see we her. haven't had it. Yeah, I, I like to see her challenge for a championship too. But I kind of do want to see her in that four person or what is it? Four women's tag match. Eight women tag. Yep. Yeah. We have not seen tag, them yeah. as a collective unit in WWE before. So now, if that does happen, we know we got to wait until 2024 with the Charlotte yeah. news. They're saying nine months now. They haven't has they haven't done the surgery yet. So that's just a rough estimate timetable. Mm. And I'm like, man, nine months, you're talking about damn SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, man, that's, that, that's a tough pill to swallow. So once yeah. again, best wishes to her. Best wishes to Kenny. He's out indefinitely. And he wasn't a major spotlight on AEW TV. But anytime, like, you lose him. He just came off that ridiculous match with Ethan Page on Collision last week and then for him to to be out they said like he was just in so much pain and uh he finally he thought it was a hernia that was acting up just think just just think about the pain these wrestlers go through kenny was out damn near a year getting all Mm -hmm. these types of surgeries to get his body back they say diverticulitis is like one of the most painful things you can imagine you could ever go through here's this man worked the match with page right the flares up he goes out there cuts a promo high as a kite which is hilarious. Promo sucked, but he was high as a kite. It looked <laughs> like anyway. Uh, comes back and he's just like, man, like I think my hernia is messed up again. 
like it's, it's acting up. They tell him to go to the doctor. The doctor's like, yeah, you have diverticulitis. Mm-hmm. Like this man is still on the road, moving and and working. It's like God, like we just gotta appreciate what they do for our entertainment. Mm-hmm. But he's out for uh, the foreseeable future. There is no timetable, so who knows where they were going with that story? They gotta figure that out now too. So that's another. And I don't. I was never high on him and Jericho, Jericho together at what all. Wasn't again? high on it. The but Golden Jets. It, yeah, the, the Golden, Golden Jets. Jets. But it's a. It, that's a major story. That that would that would be one of the things where you would say, "Hey, this is a major match for Worlds in, and this is a major story around our AEW tag team titles." That goes to the side now. Um, it just sucks. It it does it does suck. And that that segment wasn't good. Like AEW's done a lot of fantastic things this week on TV, and I would use the words fantastic. I haven't had a chance to watch the Rampage match yet with Vikingo, um, Penta. I haven't seen the Six Man. Now I wanted that on dynamite but we got it on rampage i haven't watched that yet i'm at the main event now on collision i thought collision was excellent they are really finding that perfect balance right now and it's gonna be interesting to see how this looks first week of january because you don't have the tournament i'm gonna say to lean on but you don't have the tournament to lean on to where just the wrestling matches i'm invested in it i'm invested now we're at a point now where a lot of these wrestlers got six wins or six points or nine points, and it is coming down to two weeks before the finals. And it's like, all right, every match means something. So they've done a really good job of having awesome matches, which means something, and then doing character work and storylines, like with Tony Storm, who is bodying everything that she does. From commentary to the promos to the ring work, Swerve, who is, to me, those are my top two people in AEW. Like, they're must-watch right now and that's really kind of it but um it's gonna be interesting to see like how this works going into january now like okay you you have a really good template of strong matches and storylines can we continue that when the matches may not all have meaning that's what's going to be the interesting part coming out in january but tony during his roh scrum said that it's a good bet that this is going to be a yearly thing you know, in November, December. So I guess we have that to look forward to. But we'll see. Um, I say all that to say it sucks for these injuries. You know, both sides of it, for sure. And that's kind of where we are with it. Goddamn, pal. You threw a lot at me, man. I, I had a couple <laughs> of things I wanted to talk to you about, but you loaded me up. That was, You know what? You turned into an AW guy because you threw a lot at us in a small amount of time. I don't remember everything you said to me. But, but with Kenny... <laughs> What? But but with Kenny, you know, you said that he wasn't um, a spotlighted talent. That's a goddamn shame. Like, right? One of the best wrestlers in the world. Not a spotlight. Maybe this is why he wasn't spotlighted, right? And he there you go. Maybe he knew he wasn't feeling well and he couldn't give what he needed to be a give to be a, a spotlighted guy, right? Yep. But let's just talk about that tag team um, segment, man. I don't. It wasn't just Kenny. Like, they all were terrible. Like, this <laughs> Good and the, terrible. This was the worst this division's ever been right now, man. And like Ricky and Big Bill are happy that they don't have a tag team name and they're just single guys <laughs> holding the tag team. Like, you know what it shows? Because this, this is the worst this division's ever been. I'm a tag team guy. I thought one of the strongest things about AEW was their tag team division. This is the worst it is. And when you had these four men in the ring delivering like this horrible segment. Like, I was like, man, this is like, what's happening here? And like, even Ricky, who's normally pretty good in these type of things, he was pretty bad as well. Like, I'm just, I, I'm not sure where they're going to go. I hope they pivot to getting the belt off of Ricky and Big Bill, letting them move on to something else. And they need to rebuild this division because it's, it's a travesty where it is right now. But you know, we talked about that for a lot of episodes. Once it was like they brought the trios championship, it was just like... <laughs> The word you like to use convoluted is just God. Just which one are we supporting? Are we supporting the tag team or the trio? You mentioned that. Yeah, that was a good call. So, and, and right now, who the, is the trios? Is it still like the claimed? And Billy the claimed. Cohen? Yeah, they, they, they were selling the the devil attack for the last few weeks, so they haven't been on TV. So they were back okay. on Collision this week, cutting a promo. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't good. But that that is what you and I'm not tripping that it wasn't good. It was just horrible. It sucked. That segment sucked, but I'll take a segment that sucks like that when I can get incredible promos 
after the match from Swerve that's non scripted from Mox that sure. knocks it out of the park every single sure, time. Sure, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you got to take some of the good and the bad. So it's like, would you rather have all promos just be good? Or would you rather have some incredible promos and then some that tank? It's like, give me some that tank. No, but doing, that, it, that shouldn't have tank. It shouldn't have, but it did. I tank. mean, I'll be honest. Like, I think Ricky Starks' stock has been plummeting weekly since he's won those tag titles. Mm-hmm. Like, why? he is like, not even close to being. And why is that? It, it doesn't seem like. Because he's not resigning. That's why. But you got the belts on them, so they still yeah, want they to got the belts them. on them, yeah. and they're giving them time. Yep, it's just like I just don't, I can't really put my finger on what's not working about this. I think it's with him and Big Bill. They don't have uh, chemistry. They don't have. They chemistry. don't. And to your point, like it's not a good thing y'all don't have a tag name. It's not a good thing y'all are singles wrestlers <laughs> that are in a tag team, but you have the tag titles as heels. Okay, I get that. Like we're not even a team. And we're better than your your favorites. That sounds better than kind of what what they say. Mm-hmm. You know when they come out there, uh, Big Bill <laughs> doesn't need promo time. No. I really <laughs> like Big Bill. We can go back and listen to the earlier episodes where I'm like, do something with this man. This man is too yeah. big and too talented to not be doing anything. That's when I went through my whole AW has trouble booking big guys. Um, speaking of big guys, Keith Lee. He had a match on ROH and then on Collision. Uh, Lexi basically is like, hey, look, you said you were coming after him. You beat, you know, uh, Shane Taylor. Mm. So that's done now. And he's like, he's not the him I'm talking about. Mm. And then Brian Cage comes out as a great squash match. I'm a big Cage guy, too. He just needs a mouthpiece a lot of times. They come back and cut a promo, and he's just like, hey, I, we know this is Swerve's house, but we live in that house, too. We run in it. We coming for it. And then Keith Lee walks up to him and says, tell him I can only wait so much longer. Yeah. So we are finally getting back Finishing to that story. Swerve and Keith Lee. And I don't care how much time went past, because all Swerve has to do is cut one promo about Keith Lee, and I am back invested in that. So I don't know if we get that. I mean... I think Swerve is probably going to be in the finals of the tournament at Rose End, mm-hmm. right? Wouldn't we say? Yeah. Yeah. But then I'm also yeah. conflicted, too, because I don't know if I... I think it's a scapegoat if that's the belt Swerve wins. Like, well, we talked about, that. hey, yeah, he's going to be the first black... Ago. He's going to be the first yeah. black AEW world champion, and technically, if he wins that tournament and that belt, that counts, but it's like, that's not the belt I'm talking about. Right. I want him to be the world... The top champion. Mm-hmm. in AEW. That's the belt that I want him to have first. I don't want him having the Continental Classic title because we don't even know how this looks mm-hmm. in a couple months. Um, so I am happy that they went back to Swerve and Keith Lee. So they're doing good stuff. But like I said, that, that promo was bad. Um, e, you got to go and watch, if you haven't, uh, Brian Keith versus Orange Cassidy from Collision. Anybody else who hasn't watched that, go out of your way to watch that match. That's awesome. If you don't know about Brian Keith, one of the hottest indie, indie guys out right now. And he came out to still tipping. So Let's Tony Khan paid again Let's go. for licensed music. And I was all about Swisher House back in the day and Mike Jones and all of <laughs> them. Slim Thug, all of that. I'm not even from Houston, but that was, those were my joints <laughs> back then. But uh, really, really strong match. It, it was good to see. It, it was really, really good to see. Uh, um. Last thing on AEW, and then I want to talk about the TV deals because we didn't talk about it last week just because Meltzer made one comment like things are changing. That was it. And it's like, all right, man, well, that's not enough to like comment on. But I do just kind of want to ask you guys like a simple question about Raw. Uh, Last thing on AEW, we saw evidently Paige is not the devil because he got jumped and got put through the car window that looked like real glass to me. So I don't know if that was a wink and a nod that Jack Perry's coming and he's a devil. But uh, any new devil development thoughts? This devil storyline is being written down on paper by crayons. Tony Khan could not even use a regular pencil to come up with this. This is like four-year-old writing. Did this week's AEW program do anything to help you and help him not use crayons, and maybe did he move up to colored pencils? <laughs> I'm just ready for this thing to be over, man. I'm ready for them to reveal who this devil character is. 
Um, let's see what the fashion is. Let's just move on with the story. Like it's it's just I'm over it. I mean, they dropped the ball on the whole thing. And at what moment in in particular were you did it jump the shark for you? You know, I, I think that they did the devil storyline a disservice by make not making it a focal point since its it's, it's inception. You know, MJF had all this other shit going on, all these thousand story threads. That should have been the story thread. That should have been the major threat. That should have been the big bad that he needed to overcome the entire time. And they kind of spread it out to where he had too much things to focus on. So if he wasn't worried about it, why should we worry about it? Like, right? So I just felt like it just kind of set up for the, in a bad situation just from the very beginning by not focusing on it properly. Well, I'm not so down on the double storyline, as everyone knows. I actually was a little bit more excited because they pulled from that WWE light booking and they had that <laughs> parking lot brawl. That was sick. And and I, I just, I love how Hangman, like, fights. I'll, I'll say fight because when he fights, it's, it's like, it seems like it's a real fight. And it's, it's, a, it's a skill and a talent to have that. So that made me a little bit more excited. For sure. And then when the guy comes out, the, the devil wearing the mask comes out the car, it looks just like MJF. Just like MJF. Because it to, is MJF. To me, to me, it looks just like MJF. That was MJF that week. Yeah. That was I MJF. Mean, so. It wasn't MJF the first week <laughs> under the mask. No. But that was MJF yeah. this week. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, no, I love that parking lot brawl. I'm like, okay, I see y'all doing NXT style right now. I love it. Hey, why did it, why did my man pull up in his car, right? And then they slammed the hangman on on his car. Like, I got do I got to drive back to the airport. That's a rental. That's a rental. They don't care. Oh, so he don't care. About good thing is he, he hit him right in the windshield though. So no no hood damage. The two hundred fifty dollars right? and you good. Yeah, it's just yeah, just give him that two hundred fifty thousand, two hundred fifty thousand, two hundred fifty dollar deductible. <laughs> Safe glass to come out and fix that in forty five minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not a ad either. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I would have slammed him on Hangman's car at least. You know what I'm saying? Now, <laughs> look, you now you gotta pay a deductible, and you got your ass well. I mean, now, now I gotta pay a deductible. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like the this this is a bad boss because I ain't a boss decision. He gotta come out of pocket now. I don't know. Well, but he, but he could turn this and be a really good boss. And Tony Khan call Triple H, give Hangman the rematch against Roman Reigns. It's a big money match. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Big money match. He could pay be a fight. for their It'll rental. Be a fight. Yep. You kidding me? Mm-hmm. That's how. That's how you can turn it upside down. E, I, I'm sure you got a kick out of it. You see Tony Khan uh, basically saying that like uh, people are picking on him. It doesn't matter how good the shows are. People are going to find something to uh, be a, you know be upset about and how he's the only person that's still standing going against WWE for like the last 20 years. They've all gone and it's hard to do 52 weeks of TV, uh, even as a fan, to keep up with it. And uh, he feels like everything's been great, and he's just going to keep saying the course. Yeah, he, he's on, he opened up the Wamberlands. Um, I, got, I got his little, uh, his, his, his quote here. He says, to be AEW is to be under constant attack. You do a great show, and the next day, somebody's saying something negative. You do five great shows in a row, somebody says something negative. You break the ticket record for the most tickets sold ever for a wrestling show in the history of the world, and somebody has something bad to say about it. At this point, I don't even worry about it. Talk that shit, TK. Yeah. Talk that shit, TK. Don't worry about it, man. Keep not having your arenas filled the way they were years ago because you don't want to listen to it. But that's two you, totally separate things. Oh, you no. can't do that. You can't do that. You cannot come out and throw shots consistently at WWE. That's true. When you were when you guys were on that's top. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And talk about how you are beating them and you are a challenger brand and we're coming right after them and then just a couple months ago you call them ball headed assholes when y'all went head to head <laughs> against NXT Ball-headed and then you threw a fine. shot at Undertaker and you threw a shot at John Cena for their drawing power because that was the lowest They've ever drawn, even though you lost that ratings. You can't pick and choose when to play the victim and when to go at the other. No, this just goes in cycles. It goes in cycles. You are going to be up sometimes. You're going to be down sometimes. When you're down, you need to take your lumps, figure out what's really not working, and then attack that. But to say, like, hey, no matter what we do, we get 
you know. Yeah, we know who that, but we know what segment of that fans are. We know they don't anything that you do. They're not going to, we're not talking about them. We're talking about people like us that truly care about the health of the professional wrestling business that wants the best we can get. When we have critiques, you need to listen to those critiques. And it's so funny because under that video, it was just one video. That video was out everywhere. But I just saw so many comments. And it's like, that's why they're in the position they're in. Because it, what he said in that ahead. tweet, though, is not incorrect. That's that is a that's factual and that's real. And that's with anything that you do in life. So I don't have a problem with him coming out with that. Now, behind the scenes, is he working at trying to improve his product? That's what I care about. But what he said on Twitter, that's true, because you could do everything right and people will still complain. We know about that already. OK, but what I'm OK. But that is you can't say that. But then the last two years tout that you were Booker of the Year in the Wrestling Observer newsletter. And so if you're touting that you got the most votes for being the best, when there's negativity, you can't just say like, oh, well, people are just always going to complain. You, you weren't saying that two years ago. So what should because he Because if, yeah. if, there, if there was anything that was negative two years ago, they attacked it. I remember the tweets of, hey, Tony, you should switch the... Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it happened a couple of times. Hey, Tony, you should switch the, the video montage before the match to show why people are invested. And Tony would legit respond and say, that's a great Got idea it. on it. And then the next week they would do it. Now, maybe he's getting so much negativity mm -hmm. that he can't control or do everything at once. But just to, like to me, when I saw that, I was like, I did feel like it was a little bit of playing the a victim. Um, the victim card and also felt like a little bit of, so you think everything's perfect. But I don't feel it that way, but I, I can see why you say that. And I can appreciate that, but I'm, I didn't, I don't take it that way. It could just be our different perspectives on it and our different views on AEW. No, it's definitely with, with Tony, when he was on busted open years ago and he said that the more things he has to do for the company, the company's better off from it. Like, I knew they were in trouble. That's not, that's not how any business should run to where the one person feels like he has to do everything in order to be successful, especially that big of a company, like that big of a company. And so in that moment, I knew that he started insulating himself. Like, look, I got, it's, it's, it's all on me and I'm the only person that can do this. Um, and that's, that's, that's the bigger problem with the company. Um, but with that being said, I do feel like when, Majority of the shows lately have been pretty good. The Continental mm -hmm. Tournament has been pretty good. Um, um, they have a lot of good things going on with the show. I think, like I said, I think the double storyline has been a little convoluted. But that's just one component of the actual show. I think majority of the show has been pretty good. So hopefully he's starting to focus in on what made that company great originally. Um, I think another part of it has to be the tag team division. Um, there's definitely room for improvement. I I just don't know if he has the right people or mindset to make the improvements that need to be made. I think I feel like he started to insulate himself a little bit, and I think that Vince McMahon. I was one of the mistakes of Vince McMahon. He I felt like he insulated himself around a bunch of yes men that only told him what he wanted mm -hmm. to hear, and eventually, you know, we started getting the product that we got. I hope we're not getting that with Tony. I hope that Tony starts getting proper feedback and he makes. The, the improvements that continue in that show, but I don't know, y'all. Something a little bit lighter, though. I'll oh, go ahead, Matt. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Because this is much lighter than what y'all were talking about there. I just have a one to say to Orange Cassidy. Commentary said something like he was the only wrestler to hit 50 matches, one, like he's won 50, 50 matches in 2023. Like, this guy, once again, is a workhorse. He may come up as one of my top guys in our best of series over these next two episodes, but 50 wins in a year. That's like Hogan numbers, right? We still got two more, three more weeks of the year left. Hogan said, so you're saying, like, so you're saying that was a made up number? No, I'm not like saying it's made up. No, no, no. <laughs> no I'm yeah. saying it was a, well, Hogan made up those numbers is what I'm saying. But no, um, bravo to that guy. Again, I still feel like the second run of him being the champ is kind of a little bit lackluster, um, but we don't need to visit that part of it. But again, bravo to him. And then welcome back, Thunder Rosa. 
So she's been gone since October 2022, and now she's going to have a match at next. We got to see her on Collision yesterday, yep. but we'll be able to see her um, next next week on Collision on their holiday special. She and looked a good tag too. match. Yeah, she looked real yeah. good. Real good. Um, I have a little bit of issue with her coming back to save Abaddon. Like, I don't think. I mean, to me, that's like way, be, way beneath her. Way beneath her. And that's no shot at Abaddon. But like, Abaddon hasn't been in any like major storylines. But I'm happy she's on TV. So I guess beggars can't be choosers. I'm just happy she's back on TV. She's been clear since October. So this is the way to get her on TV. Okay, cool. But she should have been thrusted. Like, why is she coming back? to help Abaddon to wrestle Julia and Sky Blue, which they called the Sky Black. She had on all black. They both look great. She too, looked great. On, on, on Collision. Uh, but why is she coming back for that when she had to relinquish her title? That should be her, her sole focus. She should have came out with a live mic and said, I am cleared. I am back. That title is mine. And then we're off mm-hmm. to the races for her getting the title shot at the next like pay-per-view. That's where she belongs. Not in a tag match with Abaddon. Maybe she doesn't feel prepared for that. No, that's not it. That's Can not you it. imagine Thun- Thunder Rosa coming back and being in a feud with Tony Storm right now? Right, I could with, not. With how over the top Tony Storm is right now, yes, with the black and white. And, I couldn't. Uh, and Tony's just confused. I don't know this woman. Who is she? Like, yeah. yes, give me all of that, please. <laughs> It would be fantastic. I, I, think, I think they're I think they're doing good by just um reducing it to the audience. All right. Cause you think about the focus of the women divisions is it's Julie Hart, Sky Blue or Black, right? And Tony mm-hmm. Storm. Right? So they give her a warm up and then she goes to the next thing. Right? Because like uh, Tony's hot right now. She is. She's great. I'm waiting for Mariah. And she's she's been killing every segment she's been in too. Um, I don't. I know she was never doing weekly TV, but she is great. You Ooh, would not one? know Mariah. Mariah. Okay. You would not know that. Like, yeah, she's she's been fantastic. She's been really really good. Let's talk about speaking of TV. Let's real quick hit the TV deals. Uh, so there's talks and take everything with a grain of salt until we get anything confirm but there's talks that potentially the warner brothers discovery and wwe has reopened conversations or they're actively talking about wwe being in the warner brothers family so don't know if that means tbs don't know if that means tnt don't know if that means hbo max don't know what that means and don't also know what that means for AEW. does that mean they automatically wouldn't Resign AEW? Are they trying to get a monopoly in the networks of wrestling? Don't know any of that. We can, you guys can speak on that if you want. I don't have anything to add to that. My only question, though, is best case scenario for you guys. What day does Monday Night Raw come on? We know SmackDown has already signed. It looks like that's staying on Friday. What day would you guys want Raw on? Change is inevitable, but I'm just programmed to watch Monday Night Raw on Monday, so keep it on Monday. Mondays, Mondays, Mondays. You know, Tony said all this. The one discovery, this just due diligence. That's all he said it was. And that's fine. You know, and it could just be them. You know, shooting the price up for another suitor. Mm-hmm. Um, and, mm-hmm. and maybe also for Tony, this could also be a really good thing because we know WWE wants a right increase. And I can't. I don't have it in front of me exactly how many millions they were making on this deal a year. So let's just say they're looking for $300 million a year for Monday Ooh. Night Raw. Okay. Tony could say, even say, say if he wanted 200 a year, right? Tony could say, we, we only want 225. And look at our metrics compared to their metrics. Is there, for Raw, is there, there 800,000 more viewers worth $75 million a year? Or you take our 850,000 viewers along with our tape library, along with our pay-per-views, and put them on streaming for $225 million a year. That could be something to look at. Yep. You know? But for me, um, I would love for Raw to be on Tuesday. Put NXT 
on CW on Monday. And then put Raw on Tuesday so they're never going against football. That's because if you don't have them go against football for half the year, that's mm-hmm. going to increase their viewership by easy, probably 400, 500,000 viewers a week. Easy. And that's more money and revenue for everybody. So put them on Tuesday. And then I also really like the Saturday pay-per-view, Tuesday Raw, Friday SmackDown. Like that gives you two days in between all the shows. And then like I said, put, see, you know, put uh, NXT on CW. I would have to assume that maybe the NXT fan base isn't kind of the same WWE proper fan base. So maybe those ratings don't dip much. And then that's also on network TV too. CW is. So maybe you get a little bit of bump seeing that's on network TV on Mondays. And it's so WWE what they're getting now. So Correct. for the last 30 years or 20, how many every years that bra has been around, at least they could still get something. Yeah. But I, I strictly years. say that as a football fan, strictly. If, if I wasn't a football fan, I would say keep it on Monday. It's interesting. So you're saying Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Monday, NXT, Tuesday, Raw, Friday, SmackDown. That's what I would do. And then your PLE is on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. But then the only problem with that is now you got to think through how does WrestleMania week look going forward? WrestleMania week is perfect right now. Friday, Saturday. It doesn't matter. Well, it matters. No, it does matter if you don't do the Raw after um wrestlemania in that same city because you can't expect fans to come in on a thursday and then leave on a wednesday that's a long well regular fans can't come anyways with the prices of these wrestlemania tickets so this for a whole bunch of different people so and you got endeavor you you sound like a broke the ufc you sound like a broke you can't say that (laughs) i'm not gonna declare you just went broke i am broke but i'm not declaring that and smackdown i ain't with incredible seats you can't talk you can't talk like that (laughs) i ain't i ain't pay for that I did something strange for a piece of change. No, you didn't. (laughs) You damn sure didn't. I'm still waiting for that payback. Are you fucking kidding me right now? See, now now, now you're getting me hot. Uh, Let's talk about Ilya. Yeah, let's let's talk about Ilya Dragunov. Uh, There was a... That's why I say us as like hardcore fans are the easiest to get work. There's a... Somebody took a picture. They also did their double taping this week too, or last week. There's a picture of him on the stretcher and it was, oh, he wrestled Ridge Holland. There was no video. It was just a picture of him on the stretcher and saying that Rich Holland and him had a match and he got injured. And now get all these think pieces on social media about how Rich Holland should have been fired. He's injured so many wrestlers. I understand we all love Biggie and we hate that he broke his neck. We know things happen. It came out to be, it was a storyline. It is a storyline. We'll see how it plays out, of course, this week on NXT TV. But we got to chill as wrestling fans on not knowing anything and then talking like <laughs> we know everything. <laughs> like the, the things that I, I saw about Ridge Holland is ridiculous. And yeah, he's had, he's hurt. There's been injuries in the ring with him for a, a few people, but to just take a picture, not knowing if it's a work or a shoot, seeing that it was something involved in Ridge Holland and then just go at this man personally, that's nasty business. That That is super, super nasty business. But as I said, we all, we, as hardcore fans, we are the easiest to get got because we think everything is real until it's not, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what's your guys' just thoughts on the angle? And then I saw some people talk about it was in poor taste. You know, oh, oh WWE knows Rich Holland is known for injuring wrestlers, and then they put him in a storyline where he injured Ilya. Like, hello, it's wrestling. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Like, lean in on real life? stuff and use it because we know it'll work I, what's the problem with that quick question or a quick comment shame on me i didn't know ridge holland was in the ring when biggie got hurt so yeah, it wasn't important it wasn't in poor taste for me because i didn't even realize he was in the ring with ridge holland when that happened oh lord yep i didn't know that and seth hurt oh. people too didn't he well, remember the whole yeah he 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 was uh, unsafe. Remember, and he I, I shouldn't say that. I don't want that to be cut. And he, and Seth he, did not hurt anybody, <laughs> but he, he has been known. Seen his nose. Yeah, he's yep. been known to have injuries and in matches that he was in. And he ain't hurt nobody since. But remember, he was the most unsafe wrestler yeah. ever at the time. Yeah, Brett didn't like him for a minute. I, wrestling fans got to chill. <laughs> Y'all just got to chill, man. I mean, yeah, I, I'm like it's, it was a travesty what happened to Ian. Damn, we. Ain't, I was hoping we would have E back in the ring by now. Do we get him at the Rumble? 
So is he? It is possible for him to come back. Last time I heard, he was done with wrestling. No, I mean he's healthy. Like he's he's one hundred percent healthy now. Look at now him, is yeah. he healthy enough to take bumps? We don't know, but it's a, it's a broken neck. Like Saray's been back, Edge has been back. It's only a matter of time. So if he Amenia, wants to do it, if he wants if I, to do it, if I'm if I'm wrong or right, please let me know. I thought at many a time this past mania he had did some heartfelt note out to his fans pretty much saying he, that this is probably his retirement. Am I not remembering that correctly? Yeah, you're not remembering correctly. At Wale Mania, he basically just said, if I'm done, I don't have any regrets. I am happy. I'm going to be able to live a healthy life. I've done some incredible things. Mm. But that wasn't a, a goodbye. Okay. okay. I'm going to go out and say we get Big E back at the wrong Number 30? No, you hype on his number 30. Oh. That's the reason why Cody didn't finish his story. Because he came in at number 30 and didn't earn it. You said you keep saying Sasha's coming in at 30. I was like, she better not win it. She's not going to win it. She better not win it. I, I like Bailey winning. So now she can go after you. I like that. That's a ready-made story. Oh, my God. It's that story again. Okay. I think, I think I'm done. John, what else, what else y'all got? Y'all got anything else before we get out of here? Rhodesia, from a scale of 1 to 10, mm-hmm. how would you rate E's flu game? He's definitely not Michael Jordan level of his hangover that was supposed to be masked as a flu. Hey, chill out. Chill out with that. But I give him I give him a solid 8, 8.5 because I saw him smile Damn. a few times. And so, yeah, you know, I'm about the smiling thing. So okay. if somebody can smile, then they're putting effort into it. Nice. Right, and he gave a thumbs up. All right. Two you know what? Them. I had him at like a two, but that thumbs up got <laughs> to about a six. You know what I'm saying? Like, he stayed monotone. I understand. I get it. I get playing hurt. And I appreciate you. Like, you showed up. You showed up. Did, you didn't show up and show up, but you showed up. So I give you I give you a six. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. I just want you to get feel better, man. Feel better. Feel better. It's holiday time. It, it sucks to get sick during holiday time. But we'll be back on Wednesday. And I know we'll break down Raw. Um, I don't know what they're planning for for next week's Raw. It must be like some type of best of show. They don't have a show schedule. And then this uh, tomorrow night is not a double taping. So I don't know what SmackDown looks like. We know, or Raw. We know SmackDown was taped. NXT was taped. So Raw is going to be the last live show until the new year for WWE. So it probably won't be a ton of news for us to talk about. It's like I said, so starting on next week, next Sunday, we'll start our best of series. And we would do that on Sunday and on Wednesday. And then I'm going to try to get the categories out on x so follow us on x if you haven't that's f and w um this week probably and then just you know maybe do some polls on what you guys think we can share that information we probably should do like nominees too i, I know we got so the too. i know we got a lot of topics we have though there's Correct. a lot of topics we have so as a team we need to figure out like the three or four best of that and a right so in and that on there do a right in too yeah so we'll, we'll have some fun with it. it should be a lot of fun to finish 2023 with the best of series. You know what's going to be interesting though, Matt? What's that? We're going we're gonna to talk about all the shows. Is that Tony Khan is not going to be Booker of the Year? He, well, he might be Rodriguez, actually. He might be Rodriguez, actually. He could. Uh, but, you know, he a lot could. of people don't like it. Him, for him winning it two years in a row to now I'm not be on the list for a lot of people, it's interesting. Hey, E. And he you, only you won. Cut off. E, you going from 8.5 to 6 from that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Truth hurts sometimes. Um, and the only reason why he won last year is because H only had the book from August, August to December. Right. Right? If it that but that August through December was a nice little run. Besides some of the raws. December. Raws were, a couple raws okay. in December was pretty bad. Yeah. November it was nasty. Nasty stuff. But yeah, so we get to go over all that. So I cannot wait to do that. That should be a lot, a lot of fun. We out of here, guys. As always, thank you guys for listening, tweeting, messaging. We appreciate you. We love you. We will see you on the next one. Peace.